So we're back down on site, down where the scrap handling and processing facility is. Back with Lloyd Bryant. Lloyd, last time I spoke to you, we were talking about the laying down of the concrete ready for the scrap handling and the 70,000 tonnes of scrap that's coming in and what that's being used for. We've just come across the yard a bit now to what you're referring to as the village. Yeah. Uh, and we can see by the side of us here some what look like modular buildings. Yes. Uh, tell us a bit about what they're going to be used for, where they've come from uh, and when they're starting to be used. Yeah, so the purpose for the village, Tim, obviously, like we've touched on, is basically to house everyone that's going to work on the EAF project, melt shop, ladles, cranes, etc. will be housed in here, all the contract parties, Tata, everyone. So the building itself was made by Wernick, who's a local company in Kenfergill. Yeah. All the units were actually built in Kenfergill and brought on lorries onto site. Um, and obviously there's a number of ex-Tata people who actually went left the company actually went to Wernick and they've had a part to play in building these buildings. Yeah, nice. Now they're a lot bigger close up than we, as with most things in the steelworks, a lot bigger close up than you see from the road. There's talk of like 1,200 people working on the project uh, over the next couple of years. And I know that will probably involve the, the casters and the, and the hot mill and the pickle line as well. I mean, that's a lot of people to, to look after and, and most of them are going to be based in these cabins. What sort of facilities are in there, like offices and mess rooms and that sort of stuff? Yeah, so um, it's split into two buildings, which we call in building one, which is the double decker you see by the side of us. Yes. And there's a single decker the other side. So the lower floors of both building one and two are office spaces and breakout kitchens, just standard breakout kitchens. But the office space alone will have enough for nearly 370 people. Yeah. Um, Within them office spaces, there's multiple meeting rooms, etc., boardroom. Yeah. So you'll be able to sit, like I said, 370 at any point. Yeah. The top floor is a total welfare floor. So we'll have a canteen, which will be able to do seating for 500 people per sitting. So we'll aim to have two seating. So when we do it peak, like you said, around 1,000, we'll split it and everybody will be able to have hot cooked food if they want or they required. But there's also a kitchen where people can do their own food. Further along the top of the welfare building then, there's a shower and locker facility for over a thousand people, men and women, thousand lockers for the men, 200 for the women, showers, changing facilities, etc. We've also got a brand new induction center so we can speed people through the induction process, which will do 70 inductions at a time. Wow. Um, we've also captured, there's multi-prayer faith rooms, there's a security room and an occupational health room all captured upstairs. It's unbelievable really, isn't it? And of course, I guess the contractors and, the, and, and our own people on the project here will be working shifts. So this is really a 24-7 facility. Isn't yeah, we've got a, we've actually engaged, uh, we've signed now a contract with a private catering company as well. So when we do move, if we move into a 24-hour working facility, there would always be hot cooked food and stuff available for people as well on site. So trying to look after people all the way through. Yeah, the yeah. And of course, last time we spoke, we talked about the scrap area being used in the short term for car parking so there's plenty of access yes. and kind of hesitate to say it's in the middle of the site how are people going to get here yeah so it'll be we'll still obviously have to do our main tartar site induction obviously to come yeah but then what will happen then tim you'll have people will come in here they'll obviously come they'll come to the main reception area which you see behind us yeah. they'll have their own separate barge in and the area sort of the eaf melt shop project will be split into nine areas they'll have inductions and cards then to specific areas and then the entrance to the site will be out to the back end of the building. Yeah, yeah. So you say the melt shop, and just for, I guess for our viewers watching, so that's the electric arc furnace and the caster project together. Yes. The pickle line has its own little village, actually, the other side of the site, doesn't yeah. it, as well? So what the pickle line have done, so they've upgraded the old Ponderosa building, which is a logistics building, totally upgraded that. That back is actually due to finish the same time as we open here, so the yeah. Ponderosa will become fully operational. Yeah. That will house all the Tata project people for the pickle line. But they've also got a setup, a port cabin setup, very similar modular buildings, yeah. which will house around the 250 contractors that'll work on the pickle line. Yeah, and I'm desperate to go and have a look in if we can do that today. Yes. Um, what sort of timing of completion are we expecting to have this all finished and have people in it? So, and originally we were going to try and get both buildings commissioned, but because of the position we are, and we want to get people in and over. Building one is coal commissioning in about two weeks. Yeah. So I'm hoping to make it, make it building one fully live by the end of November. 
building two will then follow two weeks later. So by Christmas, we should be fully operational. Wow, well, just in time to put the decorations up. Just in time for a tree. Fantastic. Can we go and have a look in, Lloyd? Yeah, That'd be awesome. awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so this is reception area. Yeah. This is where everyone comes in. This is the main reception area where everybody initially, um, before they get their inductions and their cards for areas, everyone will have to come into the reception area, report to reception, and then up to the induction centre. And now we go into the, the main office space downstairs. Lloyd, we've just had a wander around what you call the village. It is an, it's an amazing building. It is like a, a warren, isn't it? It's huge, the meeting rooms, the breakout areas. Well, we've not been upstairs yet. I'm looking forward to, to seeing that, the boardrooms. This does not feel like a modular building. No, it's, um, I think everybody that's been to him is, you know, either described it as a TARDIS or are amazed with the quality of the building inside because I think most people's perception on site might include it, that it'd be like a, a porter cabin setup. But yeah. when you actually get in here, it's actually like a proper building. It is incredible. And uh, you now understand when you talk the numbers of people who are likely to be in here, you go, yeah, I understand why it needs to be this big. Uh, you know, the quality of the finish already, I know it's not finished yet, and there's some weeks ago before people move in, the quality looks top rate. The thought that's gone into it looked great in terms of the breakout areas, the private areas, the different areas for different populations. Yeah. One of the things that occurs to me is during the project, you're going to have, I don't know, 20, 30 different companies, people working here. How are you going to manage all of those people in terms of where they all sit and interact with each other? But maybe on top of that, how are you going to, as building owner, well done, congratulations on your new job. <laughs> um, how are you going to maintain standards in here? I think with the seating plan, et cetera, required, we've, we've looked at what best practices, we've used what McAlpines have used previously when they've had big setups. So seating plan and control, I think we're quite comfortable with. Yeah. The challenge for us and me as previous Tata is the, the people piece. Yeah. This is a brand new building, you know, top of the range really, equipment, all the furniture. So there will be a big people piece around behaviours, maintaining the standards in this building for the next few years. Yeah. Because for me, it's critical. We need to keep it in, this, in the standard it is today. Mm. And it's going to be maintained because this building will go forward and obviously become the new AEF facility, yeah. welfare offices. So, you know, personally, I'll take a bit of pride in handing it over to Gavin and the AEF team in, in a really good condition. Yeah, because it is difficult, isn't it? And I hesitate to say, but there's going to be a mix of people in here from the from your office-based staff to your site workers. Yes. You know, and those guys are going to be getting going through all weathers and all conditions and still using this facility. So yeah. that discipline and sort of human behaviours is really, really critical because on one hand, you want to keep people motivated and enjoying being part of the project. But there needs to be some consequence of behaviours that don't match up to your standards. Yeah, there's going to have to be a discipline piece. We hope with the design that, you know, McAlpines have put together with Wernick is that, you know, we're making it easy for people to do the right things. Yeah. So the access for the civils, guys, etc. there'll be cleaning facilities, a change of facilities before they come in and go up into yeah. the building. Same with the office staff. So we're hoping that we've designed something to make it easy for people but there will be a piece where you'll have to drive the message home, which is the discipline piece for you. Yeah. Lloyd, I'm not going to take any more of your time. Thanks so much for bringing us in here for a kind of a sneak preview uh, to see the place in advance of it being used. Um, I'm sure the place will come alive when it's full of people and it'd be fantastic to come down and maybe talk to some of those people about what it's being uh, like to work and live in this unit. But uh, for the time being, thanks very much for bringing us down. Thanks very much, Tom. Nice one.